Huh. There we go. Let's see. Oh, I know what's going on. My light isn't on. Okay, let's do this. This one. And I think that one. Alright, so I've got my rods and I've got my threads. Now, Let's go ahead and just start with the white, because that's simple. I'm doing blue and silver for the white. And got my, where's my knife? There's my cutter and my knife. All right. Thank you. So it's a different desk now. It's a different setup. As you can see, I've got something else going on. Um, I am doing rod wrapping. Uh, so, let's see. Here's the tail. This is actually a different setup completely. This is from my laptop. So, I'm trying to figure out how I can make it so that the laptop stream, like when I'm streaming, I can transition over to the desktop. Um, so I can switch back to gaming. That should be enough. And we'll do this one fully. Okay, so we're going to start right up here on the tip. And uh, what about a. Uh, I don't know how much I want. So I just want a little bit of the silver right there, which means I have to have the crossover. Come on, stop it. All right, so I have to make it tight enough that it won't slide around, but loose enough that I can pack the threads together. about like that I think um, seems to be a little bit less than what I want so I'm gonna go ahead and give it another couple of spins and that should be good what was that like five wraps and then that's coming off and we're gonna put the blue on this is when it's gonna get really fun because I've got to have the blue hold the silver tight. At the same time, I've got to have the blue holding itself tight. And the silver is too long. So we'll cut this here so it's not in the way. And pinch it on. There we go. All right, and then Use these tails and slide it down so it matches up. There we go. Yeah. All right. Pack these in. I'm going to pinch this to just hold it tight. I don't have a lot of spin room on the other end because that's where I put the other rods down, which is not intelligent in my part. And there we go. Should be able to just work my way right on up to the base there. I've got a lot of tails hanging off here that I don't want to have to worry about later, so we'll go ahead and just snip those closer. There we go.
the silver really doesn't want to behave right now. All right. Come on. So it's a little rough. It looks like the glue may have come out a little bit more than I wiped away when I glued the tip on. So it is kind of coming out a little bit. Um, and the silver got loose. So we'll just put some thread sealant on that and that should hold the silver in place. You can see it keeps trying to split right there. Just pack it in a little bit tighter if we can. Keep it nice and tight. Keep it going. So, <laughs> funny thing, I don't actually have, oh no, I did it too far. Okay, I gotta unpull this a little bit and find my, where are they? There we go. Pull through. That should be good. Okay. So I have roughly a week to get these three rods finished, which I'm really excited about because I can get it done pretty good. Um, I've looked at a different winding method that I want to use. Um, for one of them. Uh, it'll still have a same basic um, look to it, but it'll be slightly different um, in that instead of going up, it'll go sideways, which I've never tried and I'm not entirely sure because I can't find like instructions on how, so I've just been looking at it trying to see what it looks like. All right, let's see. It looks like there might be room for like a, one more thread wrap in there. So we're going to go ahead and put that up and oh dang it. Did you see that just pop loose? All right. It's funny, you'd, you'd think that the the decorative wrap would be the harder part, just because it would, you know, require more effort. I cannot keep it tight. What the heck is it doing right here? Just, it just jumped itself. And I've got cross threads, that's lovely. But really, it is the it is the the straight wrap that is more difficult to me. One because you're just spinning the rod, and there's very little to hang on. When you're doing the decorative wrap, you're doing it right up next to where the um the uh handle is, so it stays nice and tight. All right, we're gonna cut this loop it through. Come on. And 
And then get these tails together and pull tight. Wow. All right, so this did not stay as tight as it should have. We're going to lay the blade right here. Two. Cut it. I'm actually going to use this to push it up. Put it right up top in there. And you can see right here is where it's still tight. So we want that whole thing to slide up. It doesn't want to stay tight right in the middle right there. So we'll just give it a little bit of a rub to keep it spaced out. And that should be it. So that's the first piece. Now we're going to go on, and this is going to be where it gets a little bit more difficult because we've got to we've got to wind onto the foot right there. And we're going to start with the silver again. And let's see, just to. Let's do it this way. Is that the right way? Nope. This way. I want it to come over the top of the rod so it's easier for me to keep it tight by just pulling down. So. I think my problem here is that the silver doesn't want to stay tight on its own. And when I transition, I'm not keeping it tight enough when I put the next piece on. Um, I do need to slide the whole thing up a little bit more. Let's take it over one more time. Just see if we can keep it nice and tight. And the whole thing needs to go up. Probably right about there, yeah. Uh, a little bit more, actually. That's it right there. No. Oh, is that the tail? Okay. So it really, it really wants to just spin itself loose and I can't hold it tight while I'm putting the blue on. So we're gonna try this a little bit more. I just went the wrong way over this, didn't I? Oh, I did the right. Hi, buddy! Alright, the silver is still trying to pop loose. Kitty kitty, what you doing? So... What are you doing? This is too much of a tail for me to work with. I'll go ahead and kill it right here. Cut it right here. Hi, Katie. I love the fact that it, like they can come in when I'm streaming.
Okay. So what I'm going to try and do is pinch all three tails. That's both of the silver and this glue to the rod right here. And you can see everything tried to slide up. And now I've got to slide this blue piece and these two down. And the silver is trying to slide away now too. So, get off. This is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Hi, kitty. Oh my gosh, stop, stop, stop. Oh. Yes, I love you too. You're adorable. Yes, you are. You are in the way. You're making a mess. Yes. No, no, no. Clumsy cat. He's all wet because he just came in from outside and it's just started to rain a little bit. He's also all excited because he just came inside from outside. And it's starting to rain. No! He's trying to eat the end of the rod now. Okay. Okay, so... This is actually, like, trying to cause trouble. I cannot keep the silver tight. Let me see if I pull the tail on the silver. If I can get it to tighten a little bit. No. What it's doing is it's jumping loose. Loose. But... That did tighten it up a bit, oddly enough. I wonder if I just put like a piece of tape, like a really thin piece of tape over the silver, if that would work. Oh, that tightened it up. Alright, so part of the problem is my tip has slid around, not my tip, my guide has slid around when I'm trying to mess with everything. So, and now I have too many tails. There we go. We'll keep doing this little back and forth rocking to pack it in there nice and tight.
So you can see we're getting really close to getting ready to step up onto the guide. Which hopefully the transition will be fairly easy with the sanding we did last week to be able to get it up onto the guide. It seems like it's not as as shallow of a transition as I would have hoped. Um, but here we heard it just tick its way off. So the next one should be on. And I think what I may do is just wind them up and then slide them down. So you can see I'm putting it way above um, where it needs to go. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll keep it like fairly loose above that. And I'm going to do it a third time. And then we're going to slide it down to pack them in. So we'll get those. And we'll go, I guess we'll walk it down a little bit. Ah! Okay. Got to make sure I keep it tight. And I'd rather walk down the sides than the end because I don't want it to slide right off the end, but it's, it's doing it. It just, all three of them just slid right off the end. So I may not have um, smoothed out the bottom of that guide foot as much as I needed to because it just wants to jump right off of the guide foot instead of wrapping onto it. Let's see if we can do this again. Yeah, they are going right off and underneath. I may need to grind down the guide foot again, just a little bit more. I'm going to unwind this and I'm actually going to go ahead and put a little piece of tape right on that last set of threads to hopefully keep it from unwinding. And then I think I can slide the guide foot out the top. Hi, pretty kitty. They're both in here right now. They're like, hi, person. I think this was this. So we're just going to try and, and extend the length of that flattened edge that we put on it. So it's not as sharp. We need a shallower angle, I think. Um, And I think what I'll do is I'll double check all of the guide feet before I try and actually start winding so I don't have to do this in the middle of winding. All right, so I don't know if you can tell but that is definitely not as much of a drop as it was before. And I just realized how quiet it is, so give me a second. I'm going to throw up some music. Because music makes the time go. What to do? Ah. All right, let's see. And pull the thread out. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit loose. You can see a loopy. It's a little bit. Come on. Can I get a grip on that thread? There we go. 
All right. No. And then we'll do this to smooth it out. So you can see little bits of gaps that just get filled in when you press the thread flat. And on to the next one. I'm going to make sure I've got my pull-out thread where I need it to be, though. So I can actually get that hooked up when I need it. And I think I swept it off the table earlier. It's a good thing I keep two of those around. So this, the metallic threads I like and I don't like because they have a tendency to like get kinks in them. So you can see I, I, there's a little bit of a kink in it, which is exact, exactly what I need for it to stay where it's supposed to be. Um. Yes, yes and yes. <laughs> um, so the blanks at the moment um, that I've been using are, I think I'm doing fiberglass. Um, you can get carbon fiber. Um, where I'm getting my blanks from is a, um, called mud hole. And you can just look on there and see, um, they've got blanks there and it'll, they give you like the length, the, um, action and the weight. Uh, so you should be able to do that and you'd be able to pick like um, the, the different material. If you already have a rod and you don't want to invest in a new rod, um, you'd still be paying for the shipping, but you can send it to me and I will put decorative wrap on it. Um, so I don't know if you can, uh, if you've watched any of my rod making streams before. Um, but what makes it unique about the, the way that I do the rod winding um, or that my family does the rod winding um, is just something. I've got a Shimano rod. Um, actually just finished winding on it. Um, so, like, you can pick the rod that you like. And then we just put the winding on it for decorative. So, this is the rod I finished for my niece. And basically, it's got you know, the decorative wrap and it's really pretty, but the, what makes it unique is the measurement. So the way I do it, I'm going to let it drop down here. The first amount right here, all the way up to here is nine inches. And then I've got an inch marker, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and I even went up after the break on the next piece of the rod. You can see the 20 inch mark here. And then 21, 22, 23, and 24 inches is the measurement on this rod. Um, just so that it's got the measurements. So you don't have to take an extra ruler out when you go fishing. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know if other, do other countries, I don't, I don't know so much if other countries have, um, the slot limits that we have here in America, um, which is the main purpose of putting the, the measurements on it, uh, so that you can stay within the slot limits without having to take extra equipment out when you go fishing. Yeah, Ted, I saw you went fishing the other day and I was like, oh, he's going to need a new rod soon. <laughs> That's something my dad did. So this is, like I said, it's like a, it's a family thing. Tradition, sort of. The first rod, uh, first, first official rod is like made. And passed down, not necessarily passed down, um, but it's it's made for the person who is learning and or starting to fish. Um, in this case, my nieces. Uh, they did learn a bit about fishing with the little like starter fishing Zebco rods. 
I guess sometimes he does the bobber, sometimes he doesn't. It depends on where we're fishing. But he'll get like one set up with live bait for like um, minnows mostly. We don't usually fish with uh, like crickets or anything like that. Uh, and then he keeps another one, a second rod set up with um, like a snap so he can easily change out lures and fish that way. Yeah, just the, the, the light wrap. See, my brother's like that. I, honestly, the, the one I did the full wrap on was the first time I actually did a full wrap. And I was a little hesitant about it because my dad hasn't even got a rod, that, rod that's got a full wrap. Uh, but I just liked the pattern. And so when I did it, like, I, it, I, I'm very very happy with the way it came out uh the full wrap is is beautiful like unfortunately when i i didn't seal it properly before i i um i didn't uh, there's a um, color sealant that you use before you put on the finish or varnish which i did not seal it properly and uh it like leaked into the threads the varnish did so the whole thing is just a little bit faded looking now, which right, the, it basically it makes the, the threads look wet. Um, so it like finished is not as pretty as it did, but oh my goodness, when I, when I first finished winding it before I put the um, varnish on, it was beautiful and I still love it. It's, it is beautiful. Um, basically what I did was I tried to match it to uh, the existing color scheme on the rod, which is just a red and black rod. So on the on a black background for the rod, I matched the red, and then I I used black as like the base pattern for the um, the filler on the full wrap. They all just went right underneath again. This is the same problem I was having with the other one. Let's do this. We'll push up on here so they pinch down. Make sure that doesn't roll over the rod. Yeah. See, my I I didn't realize like how helpful it is to have two rods. I don't know how to get it to come up when you do that. Um, if you look on like my home page, it, and I'll have the social links there and the Discord is there. Um, Ted, I don't know. Here, give me a second. Let me see if I can post up. Let's see if I've got it on this computer. And we'll have it on this computer. Okay. to make it so links are enabled on my Twitch before it will allow me to do that. Oh, wait. Oh, I got a better idea. Hey, 
There we go. There you go. I just uh, whispered. I'll make a I'll, I'll make a thread on there at some point that's going to be specifically for the rod winding, um, so it'll be easy to keep track of what's going on. And I can even post pictures and whatnot in there. Or if you get a different rod, you can post pictures in there. Um, the rod winding to me is it I don't know it's something to be shared. I don't think it should be like exclusive. I don't do it specifically for the money. Um, I do it because it's it's fun. It's it's something I'm good at, like even better than gaming. Um, and it's also like a family tradition, so it's nice that I can 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 do that. Uh, and honestly, like I feel like everybody should have at least one rod that's just fancy AF. <laughs> Um, that when you go out to the water, you know, and even if you're not fishing with that rod, and it doesn't change the functionality of it, that's the best part about it. No matter how fancy you, you put the windings on, the rod functions exactly the same. Um, but yeah, if you go out to the water with a rod that just looks like that, everybody's gonna be, you know, looking at it. And you gotta also remember, like, you're spending so long just waiting for a fish to bite. At least you got something nice to look at. That being said, like, almost anywhere you can fish is beautiful. Just because, you know, water features are amazing, too. Alright, so it looks like my guide shifted around the rod. Just a little bit. So I'm going to try and sh shift it back before I pull the tape off and it just slides out. Now, where's the tail? Right there. I live in Virginia, so there's there's some pretty good fishing around here. I usually fish, um, I'll go down and fish on the James, uh, James River, which is like, I would say one of the better rivers for fishing in Virginia, but Virginia has a nice little selection of rivers. Um, and then of course, like, there's Lake Anna, which is probably not I don't know, not as well known, but I mean, for Virginia it is because the lake um, area stretches, I uh, think about three, four miles of a uh, river basin before it gets to the dam. Uh, and it's fed by so many different little streams and whatnot. You just have to be careful not to go too close to the power plant. Uh, so that's where I normally end up fishing is uh, either the James or, or like lake fishing, pond fishing. Um, there's a couple of different places. I'm not going to give too many because I don't want to <laughs> give away exact location or anything. But um, yeah, I enjoy it. I will say um, I am not familiar with fly fishing or fly fishing rods. So I haven't wound one yet. I'd have to like look up that kind of stuff, if that is something you would be interested in or something you fish with. Um, casting rods, uh, the first rod I wound was a casting rod, which is actually a fun story. Um, we were doing a, an all day float on the James. It's, uh, we basically get a whole bunch of boats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might. That would, I, I feel like that would, um, 
if you'd have to blur out some stuff or not explain how you're doing it, because everybody would be like, oh, he's teaching people how to make guns! And not just any gun, the worst kind of gun there is! Which it really, personal opinion, I, like, it's all exaggerated. A gun is a gun, regardless of which kind it is, and can do the same amount of damage depending on whose hands it's in. But, so, Washington. Is, is there a lot of, like, good fishing out in Washington? I did it again! See, this is my favorite thing to do. Wrong. I'll just wind all the way up and forget to put my tie-off thread in. <laughs> right? You would you would get canceled so fast it wouldn't even be funny. The well actually what would be funny oh come on. It would be funny in like the amount of disinformation that would be used to cancel you. But hey, I mean, you could take up rod winding and then, then you'd have a nice, clean, fun, sportsman thing that uh, anybody could watch. I've seen so many different, like, really, really, really pretty pretty looking rod things and honestly I just want to try them out so you say hey I want a rod winding I'm like oh ooh, can I do this on your rod <laughs> and I'll be like ooh, it looks good came out nice uh, so right now I have the the three rods on that the screen I threw up earlier um, are the ones that I've I've got one more that I haven't finished which was that casting rod Oh, I was getting ready to tell a story about that, and then I saw your AR thing. Uh, so that, we were doing an all-day float down the James River, which is basically, I think it's a four-mile stretch of river, and we just keep, we get in boats, and in this instance, we had three John boats and a canoe. And... Uh, what we ended up doing was just, you know, getting in the boats and going. So my brother and I were in the canoe. Um, my one sister was in a John boat with her husband. And my other sister was um, in the John boat with my, another John boat with my parents. So I think that was, I think that was the trip that was like that. I don't know. Honestly, I forget which trips are which. But essentially there's like an island. And you can go down one side or the other. And we picked... Um, my brother and I went down one side and it was just the two of us in the canoe. Um, fun fact about the canoe on the river, it goes down river very easily. Um, so we had, you know, float along really nicely. Where did I put it? There it is. This is the thing I'm going to lose the most. It's the easiest thing to remake because it's just a piece of fishing wine that lasts a little bit harder. But I've lost like four of them now. And I don't have fishing line handy. Anyway. We were floating down and I don't know. We, we, we were on one side of the island and everybody else went down the other side, which was really funny. Um... So we're, we were, it was just me and my brother on this one side of the island, and we're, it, it was a nice day and really clear water, and I just happened to look down, and there's a six-foot casting rod, like, looked like it would have been brand new, probably about the time that it, it fell in the water, um, but it had been underwater for a good few days, <laughs> minutes, 
I don't know, sometime. And uh, it was a little bit uh, crusty. So I actually took one of my rods with the lure on and had the treble hook. And I just jammed the rod straight down six feet into the water. I think I, I maybe it been like six to eight feet. I don't know how deep it was. But I'm leaning over the edge of the canoe um, with like the rod in the water just like trying to snag it. And I managed to, I did manage to snag it. So we, I fished it up out of the bottom of the river and cleaned it up. And that's the that's the first rod that I wound. So I, I basically, when I finished cleaning it up from being underwater for who knows how long, it was it was it was pretty torn up. Um, so I I just stripped it completely uh, and remade it. So I'm gonna clean off the marker for my spine. I don't need the spine marker anymore since I've got the guides on the spine already. I'll have to get in there and get it more cleaned up once I've got this tape out of the way. But that should be enough. So, yeah, one of my rods I didn't even buy. It's a really nice rod. The reel that was on it, uh, when I went and looked it up, uh, the reel was a hundred and eighty dollar reel, and then you know the cost of the rod, and it, they were a set, so they went together, and it just blows my mind that someone would let that go. I can understand like you lose a lure, you're like eh five bucks whatever, and you you know go get a new one, but to lose a, an entire rod. I want to go salmon fishing at some point. I've never been. You know what I've never done either is ocean fishing. Um, I think that would be fun to try some ocean fishing. No. Oh my gosh. It keeps trying to spin. Pull this end tight. Er, tighter. So is that normally what you end up fishing is salmon? That's the fun thing about like fishing. Like I don't know much about like the different regions or what they have available. Um, I know where we are. We generally fish. Ooh, that just came up. We generally fish um, bass. Bass fishing is the best fishing in our area. Bass itself is just fun to catch. Because um, it is, it's, it's fun. Um, the, they're really good sport fish because they, f they fight a lot. Um, another fish that we end up uh, fishing like we just go fishing for is crappie or crappie. I'm not entirely sure. I think however you say it is a regional thing. Um, I say crappie because crappie sounds weird to me and also kind of crappie. Um, so we, I, we usually go crappie fishing, um, which was actually what, what triggered the making of these rods. Uh, we were taking my nieces crappie fishing for the um, spawning season early this year and they were really excited but we had so much trouble finding rods that they could use that would you know work and it was just like well I guess it's time to make them some rods and so that's what started this I'm making the rods for them now so that next year or anytime they want they'll have some nice, good rods to go fishing with.
All right, I'm going to pull this tape off now. Looks like I actually finally got the silver nice and tight. That's been the hardest thing so far to do is get the silver tight tight. I'm not really worried about whether it's going to stay tight or not. Um, and I'm also thinking like as much as that as a really nice little decorative marker on it. If I'm going to do something like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a full wrap. Like a stacked wrap. So you wrap the thing in silver and then just wrap the blue on top of it. Like how I do for putting on the... Um, Uh, hook keeper. So I got one more guide on this rod, and then I'll go ahead and switch to the next rod and keep working. I'm probably going to work a little bit longer today, um, and I'll probably be back um, periodically throughout the week to just keep, keep going with the rod making. Uh, so I can get them done uh, for birthday presents. Uh, the gr <laughs> funny thing about this, um, for me it's really exciting. Girls have no idea. They're quite sure that I'm making them Barbie clothes again. Um, which is it's funny, because, you know, I, I can and I will. Well, I have a new goal now for them after this. Um, somebody gave them American Girl dolls. So I will be making them American Girl doll cl clothes. I'll be probably making them something like an, a Dolly and Me um, set up. I don't know if I'm going to do that on stream yet or not, just because of the logistics of trying to get my sewing machine and everything all set up. This is really easy because it's just one spot, and I can hold the rod right there. But um, I'm excited about you know trying something like that for them. Um, So we'll see how that goes. This might be too far down. No, it looks about right. Got a question. Is the music too loud? Like, for me, it seems like it might be too loud, but it's like speakers are facing me and the microphone is also facing me, so it's coming from behind the microphone. So I feel like you guys probably don't hear it as loud as I do. My sister actually forgot what I was getting the girls. It was really funny. She's like, what are you making again? She's probably been told a bajillion times by the girls what they're getting from me. Because they they think they know. They're positive I'm making them more dar Barbie clothes. Um, they know I have fabric. They know I've got pictures of the certain outfits they want. So they're, they're thinking that I must be working on what they wanted. What they've already told me that, that they're going to get. Um, and not a single one of them has guessed a fishing rod. Which, I mean, I guess makes sense, uh, given everything else that I generally make. That, you know, somebody else would be working on this. Normally it's something my dad would do, but... Um, he's been working overtime, I think, recently. And he's also well, injured his back. So he doesn't spend a lot of time just sitting down working on stuff anymore. Not the way he used to anyway. Uh, so he he gets home from work and he's basically just done with the day. I 
did not grind enough off of the feet. Well, that's a lesson for next time. I think it's time to go ahead and just see. About getting this up here. So I'm going to wind on two. We'll make it three. And then we'll slide it down. How's it going? I'm doing great. So we started off the Sunday with a move, actually. Um, a f co-worker of my brother's is cleaning out an apartment and moving. Um, I think they had it set up as like a temporary, like, temporary place. But basically, my brother is getting the bedroom set, which is like a guest bedroom set but he's he's hijacking the mattress he totally is like oh foam mattress done uh so spent the morning um moving furniture around and now i get to relax and have some fun and just do some rod spinning i say spinning i am spinning just spinning my hands around and round and round and round how's your sunday morning going is this still morning for you? I think it's afternoon now, isn't it? Are you going to be playing later? Playing Rust or anything else? Are you on... Uh... Oh! Yeah, hanging out with the in-laws, that'll um, take up some time. <laughs> I do not have in-laws, so I cannot make comments about it. Um, my Both of my sisters, when they got married, their in-laws are really cool people. Um, so, like, it's really nice that... It's. It, I like hanging out with the in-laws, actually. Their in-laws. I don't have a problem, and neither do they. Valorant. I downloaded it. <laughs> Did I download it? I think I got Valorant, because it was free. And I was like, I want to see. And then last night, one of my friends was like, Hey, have you seen Slipgate? Or Splitgate? I can't remember which, one it, which way it's called. I think it's Slipgate? Splitgate. I don't remember. Splitgate? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I did not realize how much fun it would be. So, I've played way too many shooter games where, um, it just, there's so much you have to know about the character you're playing, and their abilities and whatnot. And with this, there's literally, everybody has the exact same abilities and or exact same guns. So there's no, like, advantage whether you've been playing longer or... Well, I mean, you get better the longer you play, but there's no, like, oh, well, I know this guy's uh, effects down by heart. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. Um, I won't say that I'm really good. and It'll probably take me ages to get really good, but it's fun enough that I would keep playing it. I put it on my my list, my wish list. I'm probably going to pre-order it at some point. The New World. The so Splitgate was free, so that was a no-brainer. Just, oh yeah, hop in and do it. Um, it's still in beta testing as well. Um, and so I'm I'm looking at New World, and I'm I'm probably, I probably am going to get it. I put it on my wish list so that I could. 
um, so I wouldn't lose track of it when I w went to look at the next thing. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. I like I'm not. A <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm 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 looking at it. It does look like something I might somewhat enjoy. Does it allow you to like team up with other people? Okay. This one wants to like slide up where it goes wider now. It doesn't want to stay packed in real tight right here. So I don't know if I'll be moving to New World quite yet. I'm I'm actually really excited because I just I started with Red Dead Online, and for the first time in like two months, I'm actually playing a game with my brother again. Um, we used to play Destiny a lot, and then I got on to Rust, and he kept on Destiny. Um, he he stayed on Destiny, and I don't know. So I haven't played too much with him too much recently. Uh, so it's really exciting that he's doing Red Dead with me. Um, and he's also teaching me a little bit about the game in general. Um, but I can't really, like, every time I'm like, Hey, do you want to try this? Or do you want to try that? Do you want to play a game? He's like, I've already got these three games that I play all the time. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. But team with five. Okay, so that's not bad. Gonna pull this tape off. And. Yeah. So I might be playing a little bit more Splitgate tonight. Um, I'm probably gonna be playing some Red Dead. Um, I never did get to finish my lighthouse on Rust, so <laughs> I. Any number of things I could be doing later tonight um and then you know all, all next week i'm i might be I, I might download it just to keep myself occupied for next week i impulsively took a week off of work just because i wanted some me time and i also knew that i wasn't done with the fishing rods yet and um the twins birthday is actually next sunday <laughs> So, I need to get the rods finished and the two hours that I generally do for stream time isn't going to be enough. Uh, so, I'm probably going to be working on those early week. My brother-in-law is going out of town later in the week. So, I'm probably going to be over at my sister's helping um, in the evenings occasionally. Uh, just my mom will be there in the mornings as a helping hand. And I'll be there in the evenings. And I'll get to see the little lucky kitty. He's my new favorite. But, um, I'll probably do, like, an early morning stream, which would be... I'm not affiliated because I don't have enough views yet. Uh, my average views per stream are 1.4. Which actually went up by 0.1 last night. So, um... I think until I started hanging out with Coco and met Peach, um, it was literally just my brother watching my stream to help me get the views. And we were thinking that Twitch was, I guess, monitoring the, the, um, not the server, the modem IP. I was like, well, you're in the same house. That's just cheating. So it didn't qualify for the views. So I'm, I'm working from the back to get up there. Um, but I honestly, I think it's not very far away. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited and I'm working hard for it. I got, I got to 50 um, follows a week and a half ago? A week ago? I'm not sure. Not too long ago. Um, I literally just got to 50 follows. Um, and then the three views, it's it's an average per stream. And I usually don't have very many. And I've been streaming for way longer. So it's got to, like, overcome the lower average. 
Uh, so I think that's what's what's the del delay here, most of it. But I'm I'm not that worried about it. I'm hoping to get there soon, but I all, everything I do on stream is more for fun than anything else, and I've figured out that some people enjoy watching it. Um, but most of it I do for the people I get to play with more than anything else. Uh, like Peach. I love playing with Peach. And Coco's pretty fun, although he abandoned us in favor of uh, playing Valorant. Three is your average. You don't have enough followers. Well, I can give you two follows. I can get you two follows. Yeah, well, and the, like... I wish mine was the other way around. Right now, I think I just crossed a thread. I can't tell. This doesn't want to go in right. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the follows, but everybody just follows and then leaves. Or they tap me out, and unfortunately, it is not tracking as a view. I think? I don't know. I Honestly, I don't know. Because I'm at 63 followers now. And it's still like, oh, you have 1.4 viewers per stream. And I'm like, are you kidding me? But in the past, um, in the past, I'll say probably about two weeks um, is when I've actually been getting the views and follows. Um, I had a bunch of friends that did that for me. They were like, oh, here's a follow, here's a follow, here's a follow. And then they just, that was it. They didn't actually follow up on the follow and, and watch the stream. So I think about 15 or 20 of my follows are just inactives. So, when I go live, I don't get anything. But, yeah. I'll, I'll try and get over to your stream and, actually, I can go drop a follow on you now, because I can get to your Twitch from the community, from, from the chat. Put this back over here so I don't lose it. And then... I just, I love how it does that. You can see just a little tiny bit of separation sometimes, and you just rub it, and the threads flatten out and smooth out, and it just looks so precise. I do have this little bits of wispy here, which will affect the finish when I do that. Uh, yep, looks good. Last one. <coughs> right here. And I think, um, given how much I've been struggling with the others, I'm going to go ahead and, and take this one off and just grind it down a little bit more. Because that would, you know, save me a little bit of headache later. grinding the back of my knuckle on the edge of this thing. <laughs> oh, it makes my teeth hurt. I don't know why that sound makes teeth hurt, but it does. Sorry, I should just turn up the music and kill the kill the VOD on this. Not the VOD, the microphone. So I'm gonna pull out show what I did here. So there's definitely gonna be a distinct difference between like the before and after here. 
It's not as noticeable the way I was doing it the last time I was working on grinding these down. Um, but, let's see. You see how it tapers? I need it to taper right there on the end so that the threads will actually climb up on the thing. When I did the first one, when I started, it looked like this. So you can see it's a very, very solid chunk of metal. The thread will not climb up on that. So that's why I'm trying to make that taper and grind it down. And you can see it does that. It doesn't quite, like it, it does look a lot smaller and easier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. Like, it's it's surprisingly easy, but it's also, like, there's, there is a level of precision to it. Um, for instance, like, all the little markings I've got on the rod, and then, like, you have to literally, and I, I don't remember if I could do this before, um, look down the rod. Come on. And you can kind of see, like, you literally look down the guides. And I can't get the angle right because of the way the camera is. But you just look down the guides to make sure they all line up with each other. Um, and it, it, I don't know. I have fun with it. It's, it's, there's a precision level to it um, that I'm getting much better at. All right, so this one has um, an inch marker right in the middle of it. I think what I'm going to do is a slight variation. I'm going to start with the blue, and I'll go up and I'll put the inch of the white. Let me see real quick. what the inch marker is at and we'll see if we need to do it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. I could do twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. 28, 29, 30. I think 30 is what I went up to. Um, I could go up to 30. I think what I might do is do like the same thing I did with the other one and leave it at 24, which I think was this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Yeah, so this one. So I don't need to worry about that inch marker. I'm just going to um, wind it the same way I did the other ones. And I do need more silver to do that with because I ran out. Um, I think I'd instead of like 11, do like 5. Do it, man! If you've got a rod, all you need to do is get the threads. I will say, getting the threads is probably going to be like, you want to make sure you get what, what you're looking for threads wise. I got lucky because like, I got to start on rods that I already had. Um, and my dad already had all the threads. So, um... He had, there's two variations. Uh, there's um, the thread that I'm using, which is the nylon um, rod winding thread. And then there's, um, uh, what do you call it? Color fast rod winding thread. I think it's also another nylon. Um, so you can see it says nylon on the end here. Um, we actually, like, this is really old. I don't even think Guide Bros exists anymore. Um, but when my dad got it, he, like, picked the, like, he'd mark the numbers, what color it was and whatnot. The threads that I've gotten, so you can see, it's the same kind of a thing. It has that size A, and it says, it says the size here, and then it has the color number uh, there. Uh, so my nylons are slightly different than his. But there's, um, I've got two, actually. I'll pull these up because somehow I managed to get both of these. So we got the color fast rod winding thread, and then you've got nylon. 
rad whitening thread. Um, so, you know, pick your colors and then get the spool. Each spool is like $3.50. Um, so, just make sure you know what you want before you do it. So, I got lucky in that my dad has a bag of threads. He went, when they when he first started, he was like, oh, well, let me just get one of everything. So, most of the threads that I'm using are his. That he already gotten and, and um so I, I i lucked out in that i didn't have to start building from scratch my entire collection the only other thing that like he didn't have that i that i went and got for myself did i totally just like knock my thread off the table i just cut a piece of the thread It got statics to the bag. I know, right? Yeah. So there's... I, I didn't even show you all of it. Those were the color fast ones. These are the... Um, the nylon ones. Minus the ones that I've pulled out for the projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, so, like, all the blues that I have. And the other colors. I think I've got, like, another... Eight, nine, nine spools, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine spools of thread out of there. So. It, it may take you a little bit, a little bit to get started if you're just doing it for fun every once in a while. But. Yeah, man. Help, help yourself. We'll see you in a little while. Um, if I'm not streaming, uh, Rod, when you get back, I'm probably getting ready to switch back over to gaming. Uh, I probably will stream gaming for, uh, well, we'll put it this way. I'll probably give myself about a 20 to 30 minute break. Um, and then I'll switch over and go back to my game, game threads, and get on my game threads. Oh my gosh, game stream. And get back on my my gaming PC because right now I'm streaming from my laptop, so I can set up in the room where I've got all this. Can't imagine it would be very easy to get everything all set up in the other room, but yeah. All right, I think that's about as much as I can get around. Grab this piece of tape here. And... Kind of slid out. So the funny thing is, like, I keep going back and forth with which way I'm winding it. I'll go clockwise and then I'll go counterclockwise or overhand or underhand. I don't know how you say it. So much easier when the rod is so wider. I guess that's why we do most of the rod winding at the base. 
So I've seen some of these rods that have um, split grips. Uh, where there's like this gap between where the real seat is and where the like the bottom part of the grip is and I like look at them and I'm like ew why would anybody want that but at the same time like I look at them and I'm like that is the perfect opportunity for just a full decorative wrap that is literally there just for decoration I think I want to make a split grip rod at some point I don't like them, like, just to look at. I've never fished with them, so I don't know how they would work for fishing. Uh, but they just don't look right to me. I guess it's because of the way the rods I grew up with were never had the split grip. But I could make a split grip rod, and I could just put straight up full wrap winding between the grips. And then I could do, like, a mini decorative wrap, which is the very subtle, like, what I've got on, on these... Um, above where the where the real seat is just for decorative okay. I feel like my discord must be blowing up right now because I keep getting like the little notification things on my watch let's see Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just knocked down, like, I've already got two spools of thread on the floor from the rod tip swinging around, and then I just dropped my phone. The worst, like, I, will, I like doing the decorative windings. I'm not necessarily a fan. Like, this should be fairly simple and straightforward. Easy to wrap. But just the, the extra bulk of the guide makes it really difficult. Alright, I think that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and pull this tight. I think if I were to try and start doing this professionally, um, I'd probably end up getting, um, like, the winding things. They have, like, these tabletop things um, that put tension on the thread for you. So instead of me trying to hold it and pull it tight, I would just mount the thread in this little box, weave it through a little tension thing, and then put my rod in another tension thing and all I have to do is spin it and it'll pull the thread off and wind it on at the same tension all the way across. Um, I haven't really looked too much at them because I figure I'm not going to be doing it that much um, but I also was not expecting the amount of feedback that I've been getting about this just working on these. This was just something fun I was doing and uh, for my nieces. Uh, and then like I've, I've got I've, there's just interest! <laughs> Which, I mean, shouldn't surprise me. It is interesting and it's really cool. Um, so maybe at some point I'll get the official like m equipment um, and it'll be easier to like focus on a spot because it'll be right there. And it'll always be the same spot. Uh, and I won't have to worry too much about where my hands are in relation to like knocking into the guide to keep the tension tight. But I should be able to keep going fairly easily, even just the way I'm doing it now. That might be it right there. I'm going to go ahead and do the step wraps. That one just slid off. So you can hear the thread slapping the rod when it slides down. So I'm just going to pinch this down a little bit. I 
we go, that one stayed on. Okay. Nope, it went under. Alright, we'll put another one on here. And... Slide it down, keep it tight. There we go. Okay. Oop, I just crossed the thread. That's not going to work. There we go. See, that's why I, I, I grind it down, because you can see just barely where the tip is sticking through the threads there. Um, if I take it and tip it sideways, like, it's not a very smooth transition, just because I didn't grind enough. But it looks nice and it looks good. That totally just jumped. I think the biggest benefit to getting like the proper tools is that my fingers wouldn't cramp. This hand that I've got to like keep the rod tight on just so it doesn't so it can keep spinning is it gets a little worn out. <laughs> it's another part of the reason why I was just doing short streams because the the cramping <laughs> in my hand. I do not. I need to get one. Um, I have like a really basic just spinner uh, for drying, but it doesn't like keep the tension because I'm pulling against what I'm spinning. Like I'm pulling with this hand and spinning the opposite way with the other hand. So I know that they make stuff that does that. Um, I just, I don't, I, we'll put it this way. This is my f fourth rod. Um, so I never really considered that I might need something like that because it's just like a little hobby thing um granted i was just doing them here and there uh you know my rod actually that's all i've spun so far is just some decorations onto my rod um and then, then now i'm just deciding to make these four rods i say just deciding uh, i'm helping my dad out normally it would be his job to make the first rods for the grandkids but he's uh not as capable as he'd like to be and he doesn't have an, enough time uh, so I was like well I know how to do it because I did it let me do it uh, so that's that's why I'm just doing it I've I've borrowed so much of his stuff but that's one of the things he didn't have either um, I don't know how he he did it or if he did it I got my blank at um, mud hole it's a C R B M C X M. Uh, I don't know C R B rods. I think. Um, so you can find the blanks. Just go to. Um, I, th I think it's just mudhole.com. It might be mudholetackle.com. Um, I think if you just t search mudhole, it comes up. Um, they're based out of Florida. And uh, I like I like it. The rod blanks are fairly, sh you know, they, they tell you what the, the weight and whatnot is on them and whatnot. Um, I think one of the things I would like to do at some point. You already have an account there? <laughs> you, you do rod winding? Dude, I didn't know that. You gotta send me some pictures or something. Maybe put something up in the Discord. Dude, that's exciting! I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. How long have you been doing it? Are you kidding? Oh, that's awesome, dude! What do you do?
do you do fly fishing? Do you do fly fishing? Like, that, the, I, that's like the one thing I don't know anything about. So I, I would love to learn a little bit about fly fishing and uh, fly winding and, and whatnot. Or, you know, fly rods. I don't even know what a... Uh, well, I kind of have a vague idea of what a fly fishing rod looks like. Um, I think my dad has one, but I've never actually seen him fish with it. I think he inherited it from his dad, but... Dude, I'm all excited now! We'll have to, like... <laughs> team up! <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know that we can do that, but... That's that's so exciting. I feel like now there's something else. That is incredible! Dude! I didn't even know! That's so exciting! So, how many rods have you done? And that being said, do you sell them or do you just... You said you do them in your spare time. Is it just for fun, or do you actually sell them? It sounds like you do more like the apparel side uh, for like the manufacturing and lure manufacturing. Dude, that's awesome! You have no idea how exciting that is to me. Okay. I mean, that's that's basically what I've done so far. I, like I said, I'm, I'm working on my fourth rod right here. And, uh... Fourth? Fifth. This is my fifth rod. Ooh! I've got more rods done than I thought I did. Um, and it's, it's all been personal or for family. I do not have a significant other to give a rod to. Um, yet. But I, I, I do like that I can do this, and that, that's fun. I'll have to look and see, like, uh, do you, like, what kind of fish are your lures manufactured or uh, for? Like, what do you normally try and, are trying to catch? Yeah. The, uh, everything that, I, that, that these rods are being made with right now, not everything, the guides I actually got off of Amazon. Um, this is the, uh, I, like, I like how Mudhole is set up where you can get everything individually one by one. Uh, but when you're making four rods, you don't want to buy and select, select and buy four uh, guides. And different sizes. So I, 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 and I wasn't even sure which guide tips that I would need for the uh, rod tips that I would need uh, for the size rods that I was getting. So I just got like a box of tips in general so I could size them out once the rods came. <coughs> and then the same thing, just an assortment of guides so I could pick the ones I wanted instead of trying to um, figure out sizes on the their website. Okay, so I'd usually do um, bass and like pan fishing. I've only done trout fishing like once or twice, but I did, like we used the um, salmon eggs or the fake salmon eggs, not actually uh, lures. So I wouldn't know which lures to use for trout, and I I, I would I you know what I'm gonna try and. <laughs> Message me! I'm gonna come look at your site! Maybe get a new lure? For... 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 Uh... For, for some bass fishing. Um... 
that's uh, that's that's so cool. Or do you have a website? You, I'm I'm really hoping you have a web website at this point. If you have manufacturing, then you would hopefully be have a way to sell them. And with the digital age, I hope there's something online. But that is that is incredible. Yeah, I crossed the thread again. So when I say, like, crossing the thread and pulling it tight and all that, you know what I'm talking about. So do you have, like, a full setup for yourself, too? Dude, I, I'm, I mean, it's, it's going to be endless questions now. Do, do you have a rod holder and, and uh, like, the tension thing for the, for the spools and whatnot? I like I like the fact that Mudhole actually has instructional videos as well. Like, if you're like, oh, I'm interested in it, and they have the parts, they also have the instructions. So if you've never done it before, you, you or don't have someone to guide you through it, like I did with my dad, um, then you can you can have like look at their videos, and it has a lot of instruction stuff for you. I think that's going to be it. It's starting to raise up a little high right there. So we'll just call that an end. Snip the thread. Put it through. Come on, I can't pinch that other one now. There we go. There we go. Three rod dryer holder used to place the rod when wrapping and stuff is like a home built dude <laughs> so the first rod i the first rod that i actually finished um i did a home built thing i i um okay cool i'll i'll keep an eye out i'll have to i i'll have to get on there when i'm when i'm not streaming to see the whisper but yeah that's awesome so i did get a rod dryer uh, this one came Straight from, straight from them. I got the forecast rod dryer. Um, I don't like the end piece because it just there's no way to really put the rod in there. I had to tape it in when I was doing it. Um, but it's it's really simple and straightforward. The first one I did, I actually had my drill, um, like drill drill, um, and I put it at the lowest slowest setting, and then I taped the handle. And I just had a box on the other end to hold it. So. <laughs> I was I was drying the rod using that, which was the reason why I got the rod dryer. And I think that was one of the better things I used. The funny thing is, on their site, they actually have a rod dryer um, that is built just like that. It's like a one a stand on one end and a. Um, Uh, a block to hold the um, the drill and you'd provide the drill yourself so I did sand grind these down <coughs> last week 
Um, I don't think I ground them down enough because they're still slipping off. So I'm just going to give them a couple more little swipes and then I'll try again um, with this one. I'm moving on to the next rod. And it's going to be the same thing with the metallic and the, and the regular thread. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure how these are going to come out, but these are the colors I'm working with. The purple and the gold. Or, I don't even know. That's not purple purple, but it's like purple-ish. Dude, I'm totally going to be on your site after I get off. I'm going to finish the stream and just go straight there and like look around. See what you've got. So is it like, uh, basically like a little family run company and you make the stuff? You like spiral rest wrap bait caster. So, my dad does, like, a lot of spinning rods. Um, I do a uh, cross wrap on mine. And we have the spinning rods. I should get better. I did the... Actually, the very first rod I did was a bait caster that I fished up from the bottom of a river. Um, and I just was trying to redo it. Um, and I did uh, chevrons. Which is, I'm going to do like a s chevrons, a cross wrap, and then um, the other one I'm, I'm hoping to do like a sideways chevrons on. Um, so I'm not sure how, so that's going to be like a learning experience for me. I would hope anyway. Alright, so let me get this back up under here. Now that I've actually like done the winding, I know that I did not do enough grinding, which is kind of sad. Plus I'm making it harder on myself by doing the metallic. US and Canada. Okay. Dude, I just I just want to get on there and look. Oh. I'm just a little bit north of you. <laughs> I'm in Virginia. We may have even fished some of the same waters at some point. Do you, you don't live in uh, in the eastern states anymore now, though, do you? Yeah. Fish the James. Actually, was there a month ago? I mean, if you're good, you might as well be.
there. Just put a little piece of tape on here to try and help hold the metallic tight while I get the red. Red, purple, I don't know what color this is. Oh, okay, let me rephrase. I'm not going to try and look up the correct color name for this. Is that why you're not on Rust too much? Is because you're traveling a lot? tape just came loose so now I'm like really fighting it right here. So you have a house there and you have a son there. So you, I guess you do kind of, is, is that where you would call yourself home base is in North Carolina? Or more, is, is it more Nevada where you've got the, the warehouse? be able to get in there with though I would think I don't know so wait how did you get to be an admin then does not want to stay tight. Dude, that's, I'm sad about that though. I feel like you were just starting to get the hang of it and get into it and then now you're just stopping. a little bit with the name change and everything. I don't know much about the admin side of it and what's going on um, with all of that. So I, I, I don't really have much knowledge of that. I did know that you were with like the 
I guess, the main developer for it. Uh, for the, um, uh, I think the Southland, which is a, the, uh, the zombie main plugin that they use. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know how a whole lot of that worked, actually. So is there still a Southland server out there somewhere that you that you can admin or play on? I guess it's good that he moved when he did too, because that allows him a little bit more freedom to be available. Okay. I don't, I don't play a lot of... Uh, actually, uh, let me rephrase. Last time I played Grand Theft Auto, it was on a, a console. And it was way different than what it is now. Dang it! Here we go again with this. I'm trying to slide around. Alright, the guide just moved on its own. So I've got to retape the guide. Okay. So you you know, you know you still get to hang out with some with him a little bit. I guess it's kind of like how um, Bird branched off and made his own um, Bird branched off and made his own um, Valheim server. Oh, this is going to be stubborn. I don't have enough hands for this. I don't play, I don't, I, I say I don't play, I don't prefer playing shooters too much. All right. So, like, both of those games, not something you'll find me playing too often. I know a guy that's modding a server for a friend. I feel like that takes a lot more work than <laughs> than anybody would like just understand when they that when they first think about it. I don't know. I guess I'm gonna find out a little bit because I just got um, a honorary moderator position in that I'm gonna help with like event planning on the server. So that's going to be fun and there's going to be some more stuff going on hopefully maybe I don't know. It'll it'll kind of depend on what I'm able to do or what they would like to have done. Um, but I don't think I'll be able to actually like load anything in. So it's more like I'd be um, just saying hey we're going to try and do this at this time frame. Be there. Um, 
So I don't know. I don't really know. We're going to have a lot of discussion about what's going on with that. Uh, but I'm excited for that to come out, you know, to, to develop and see where that goes. Thanks. So. You'll have to let me know about your server a little bit when you when you actually get it get it going. Is it um like whitelisted or is it a general open server? Or are you running a vanilla server or is it modded? Now that tape I just so painstakingly put on comes right back off again. I think that's the biggest thing I need to get is the um, glue for the guides. So that I can just gl glue them in place and wind over them. Because the tape allows it to spin. Ooh, I need to stop and put this on. Ah! Okay, well, that's fine. I think one of the biggest things I need to do or worry about, or get, I guess, eventually at some point, um, I think they make like a pole thing that's like a really fine wire. And has like a better grip handle. I should probably get something like that in, in my tool chest at some point. But the funny thing, the funny great thing about the decorative wraps is it's all taped on anyway, so I wouldn't need to worry about that unless I'm doing like a whole lot of guides or uh, like a circular wrap. I like the color contrast on this. It's coming out really nice. And I just realized I didn't do the wrap under the tip yet. Dude! You're telling me all this cool, fun stuff about yourself now. So when, when you were touring and fishing, were you... Were you using a rod you made yourself, or was it like you had to use, um, like a sponsor's rod? Because I think that would be, like, one of the most fun things to do with my rod is to just take it in and be like, and so what were you fishing with today? Oh, well, today I was using... <laughs> <laughs> You're not an old fart! You're just uh, more experienced than the rest of us. I'm probably not as young as a lot of everybody else thinks on there anyway. Yeah, so I w I w that's what I would like to do. It's just have, like... Well, I don't think I would like to do that, actually. 
<laughs> I don't like the spotlight. Let me just stream now. Um, <laughs> I don't like having to think of stuff to say that sounds really professional and, and like, I don't know, official. 